The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and Jeff Frick is my co-host for this segment. Don Sullivan is here. He's a staff systems engineer, uh, database specialist at VMware. Don, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. So we're going to talk about what's new with uh, VMware and Oracle. Many of you might remember, uh, several years ago now, it had to be at least three years ago, we started to investigate the merits of virtualizing Oracle. And at the time, Oracle was very negative on virtualizing uh, uh, well, virtualizing Oracle database-based apps with VMware. Um, and so we looked at that, we talked to a number of customers who had successfully done it. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of fun in the marketplace that Oracle wouldn't support it, and of course that's all proved not to be true. Uh, and so we wrote a piece called Damn the Torpedoes, Virtualize Oracle ASAP. Uh, and since then, the uptake has been amazing. It wasn't our piece necessarily did it, but I think we called it right. Uh, and the business value that has been created has been tremendous. So, so Don, you know, with that as introduction, uh, does that align with what you recall, you know, a few years ago and the uptake now of VMware in Oracle shops? Oh, absolutely. And and you're being very humble, Dave. And your piece did actually uh, was actually a, a major aspect of of how the adoption rate has been increasing tremendously. And in fact, I would refer to it this way: the adoption rate is increasing precipitously, as well as the increase of the adoption rate is increasing amazingly. I've spent some time, a uh, number of sessions at the Collaborate IOUG conference uh, a few weeks ago, and the number of hands raised when you asked the question as to how many of you folks in the room, Oracle folks, are actually virtualizing, and then virtualizing with vSphere, 50, 75%, and we're seeing that here in the Oracle sessions as well. Yeah, so talk a little bit about um, that, that journey, we have SeaWorld, so we like to talk about journeys. Mm -hmm. What's the journey been for uh, Oracle shops? Where did they start? And, and now you're saying that the pace of adoption is actually accelerating. Mm -hmm. So where are they starting uh, and, and where is it headed? Well, uh, it's all kind of started, I say, back in the 2008 time frame. Certainly with the release of vSphere 4 um, and the capabilities that were resident in vSphere 4 to really minimize the overhead and the impact of the virtualization layer on the overall infrastructure really made it at a point, and, and as time went on with various different customers and internal tests, and we started recognizing that, and the customer base started recognizing that uh, maybe there was a two, four, six, up to 10% overhead, and depending on the metric and the various dimension of performance you were looking at, it was very, very minimal. And as the releases went on, four, four, one, five, 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 it really stopped becoming a discussion about the performance capabilities and sort of moving into the discussion about the value. In fact, one of the books that I'm writing here actually talks specifically about the value. We, we own the letter V since we're VMware, and we talk about the value. And, and it really falls into two categories, the resource management capabilities that exist in the infrastructure, and then the various different features that allow you to meet your SLAs, whether they be availability, disaster recovery, performance, security, or any other SLA that you want to conceive of. And that's where it, we're at right now. We're at a point where 99.9% .9 of every database management system on Earth makes sense to consider putting in a virtualized infrastructure. Yeah, so if we go back to the sort of original research we did, what we found that was fascinating, so Oracle, of course, put a lot of FUD out in the market. We, we poke mm -hmm. fun at Oracle a lot, but the FUD was, we're not going to support that. If you have a problem, we're going to force you to go back to a physical environment. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I don't know of a situation where that's ever happened, do you? Uh, it, it's not impossible it can happen, but it's extremely rare, and it is FUD. And it's FUD yeah. in every possible level, in the sense that uh, y if you had a situation in which, say for instance, a legacy application, Oracle has somewhere in a hundred plus applications that they've uh, acquired at some point. If you had a legacy application that, say, uh, had a specific uh, support statement that, that only supported specific types of infrastructure, uh, you might actually run into that. I've actually run into it once, to be honest, back in 2009, mm -hmm. but it was a, it, it, there was no merit to it whatsoever. And in fact, after our, meaning VMware's GSS Oracle support team, which by the way is the best support team I've ever worked with, and I spent seven years at Oracle, five years at HP, and so on, the GSS Oracle support team, which is an Oracle support team again, mm -hmm. 
It's just amazing. Once they get involved with it, and they will open a ticket, and they will hold the ticket open until its completion under all circumstances, no matter what. Once they get involved with that, within a couple of days, that particular environment with that legacy application, well, Oracle realized it was a problem that was in the Java code, and they just took it back over. Yeah, so this is the, point I, issue. Hmm? This is the yeah. point I wanted to make, is that while Oracle sort of, and it was mostly, I mean, a lot of it was the sales guys, it's right? Always and, the and sales, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so, but the reality is, the customers that we've talked to, to your point, Oracle support has been phenomenal. And Absolutely. Oracle's a, yeah. Oracle's a great company, they're very customer driven, uh, and they understand the complexities of, 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 of database-based applications and the importance of not losing data, protecting data, uh, and Oracle is, you know, really has a pretty robust stack in that regard. So our experience has been that the support experience from our customers has been quite astounding. Absolutely. There just is, it's, it's a red herring often that comes through and it gets confused, but there just really is not an issue with it, and it never has been. Now you had mentioned off camera that you got uh, kind of working on new, some new reference architectures we with, are. with Cisco. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? So between ourselves, VMware, Cisco, EMC, run by a third party testing company called Principal Technologies out of North Carolina, we've done a number of different reference architectures, functional stress tests is what we refer to them. The most impressive of which is the functional stress test in which we took a VMAX and Cisco um, V2 M300 blades using, of course, all the Cisco networking. And the, uh, we ran Rack, it was 11.203 at the time, we started this last year, and we used a, a background tool, a, a workload tool called Benchmark Factory. And we took three Rack nodes, which of course were virtualized, so they were logical Rack nodes, and we put them under as much stress as possible. And what we decided to do is let's see what happens when we do a vMotion. So anybody who knows Rack knows it's extremely sensitive towards network disturbance of some kind. It's purposefully built that way. So if the disturbance is going to show up and if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen during a vMotion operation. So we did the vMotion under extreme stress from basically taking a node on physical host A and moving it to B. Nothing happened, everything was fine. Then we went a little crazy and decided, well, we're going to do two of them simultaneously. We're going to go A to B and then B to A. Nothing happened, everything was great. And then we went really crazy. And we said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to send all three of them together, simultaneously, concurrently, and we're going to keep them going in a round robin fashion. A to B, B to C, C to A, under extremely high stress. And what happened? Nothing. Showing the complete 100% abstraction between the operating system and the hardware, even for something as sensitive as Oracle Rack, even under the most stress that we possibly could throw at it at the same time. So really showing a lot of things you can infer from that, specifically the reality of uh, with vSphere, your hardware downtime uh, is pretty much eliminated. Okay, well, and, and, and other things as well. Oracle Rack, real application clusters is, is as you say, probably the, is the most demanding or Oracle environment. Mm -hmm. um, and talk about why it's so challenging. It's all about recovery, right? When something goes wrong, how do you, how do you recover, right? Well, and in this case, fortunately, we didn't need to do any recovery yeah. because nothing ever happened. So typically, under the circumstances of network disruption with Oracle Rack, which is again, like you said, the most sophisticated, powerful database management technology in human history, and if something would have happened, a network disruption of some kind, you get the individual Rack nodes to eject from the cluster and be fenced from the storage, and they have to reboot, and then they have to be recoverable. Even under those circumstances, we didn't necessarily need this in the test because nothing happened to cause a recovery situation. But even under those circumstances, that Oracle Rack node would just simply, the VM actually under it, would just simply be restarted on another available node in the ESX cluster, just like any other node. And it would be back up and running in four or five minutes um, with, with completely seamlessly, and you'd be back up to full strength. So Don, I want to ask you, so v VMware obviously great penetration into Oracle environments. You know, we're, we were very excited about that because we felt like it was the right thing for, for clients. You obviously must be excited. But now you have Oracle coming in. It was funny, you know, Larry Ellison at the Churchill Club with, uh, with Eddie Zander ripping on cloud. I'm sure you saw that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now you've got uh, total 180 by Oracle. They're you know, going hard after cloud. They're, you got the red cloud. How do you see that affecting VMware adoption, if at all? I don't see it at all particularly when it comes to the 12C features. Um, and, and I like to, you know, I worked at Oracle, I was an instructor at Oracle for seven years, and um, 
you know, we kind of joke now that Oracle, after 37 years, has finally recognized a relational model. <laughs> and they've got the idea of the pluggable databases and, and the cloud aspect of that and the ability to move databases as individual entities around. None of that changes the overall uh, value proposition of virtualization. In fact, I would say that there's every feature, rack, the pluggable databases, or anything else that you can conceive of, is completely complementary with virtualized infrastructure, especially when you're dealing with what is here a, a non-para virtualized type one hypervisor like ESX, which totally, again, abstracts the operating system from the hardware. So I think you referenced before a session here on, on Oracle mm -hmm. and, and the, the adoption. When you go to the independent Oracle user group meetings, mm -hmm. what are you hearing from customers around uh, VMware and Oracle? Well, this goes back sort of to your original question as well. Three, four, five years ago, well, there was a lot of resistance. There was a lot of dismissal. Uh, I did the very first real presentation uh, after, well, Oracle extended the existing support statement to Oracle Rack in 2010 for 11.202 and above. So after that point, we started doing a lot of public discussion about this, and I did some of the original presentations of running Oracle Rack on, on vSphere and talking about how complimentary they all were. And there was a lot of resistance. It was almost emotional at times. That resistance is almost gone now. Three years ago even, I remember we did six separate sessions at Collaborate and IOUG uh, in, in here, um, I believe it was in the Phoenician, in which we had you know, maybe 50 to 75 people in the audience each, and they were all new to this, and none of them really believed it. The typical Oracle DBAs being very, very conservative, right? I refer to them as the Praetorian Guard of Data. They're so <laughs> conservative and protecting. And then, But now, again, a few weeks ago at the Collaborate conference um, here as well, it was just amazing, and uh, they were, the rooms were packed, and it was about 75% of people who at least either were considering it or had already done that virtualization. And honestly, I wish at VMware we were a little better at customer collection of data in that sense. I really want to know uh, the actual rates of adoption and the actual total number of the customer base, but it's so hard, there's so many. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's you sell through the channel exclusively, right? So <laughs> it's, it's hard to track that stuff. Well, we're going to be doing some surveys with IOG to actually try to capture some of this data soon. Well, it's an mm -hmm. awesome user organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some of the most advanced customers in, in the world. Um, okay, Don, uh, last question is, uh, put a bumper sticker on EMC World uh, 2014. Uh, you know, the, the truck's pulling away from the the Las Vegas you know, Convention Center, the Hans Sands Convention Center here. What's the bumper sticker say on 2014? Flash into the future. <laughs> Good, good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk about Flash. No, but the Can we talk about Flash? Flash? We got time? Can, can, we, can we have a quick uh, discussion on that? Yeah, we got, okay, yeah. Talk about Flash. What, uh, I mean, if you think about Flash and the impact on, on database, uh, generally and specifically Oracle environments, it's, you got to be excited about that. So, Flash done right, effectively eliminates storage configuration. And the age old problems that database administrators had with slogging their way through how the storage is set up can completely go away because not only of the simplicity of it, but obviously of the speed. And it simply makes all of everything we've talked about in the last 15 minutes a better overall proposition. In fact, the next of these studies, I talked about the Rock and vSphere study, the Mega vMotion study, the next of them we're doing in the series is going to be a mass provisioning study with vCloud Automation Center and the same infrastructure I mentioned, except we're going to be switching out to vMax for an extreme I.O. array and showing how simple the entire logical infrastructure is with effectively the databases acting as props. This will be SQL Server as well as Oracle involved and then uh, on, on the stream I.O. right? So this is where there's a huge opportunity, I think, for clients mm -hmm. is, and we've written about this on Wikibon. If you bring in Flash and actually beef up your storage infrastructure using Flash, whether you're putting it into an existing array or uh, frankly, ideally, going with an all Flash array, maybe spending a little bit more on your, your storage infrastructure, what we found is that you can reduce the number of cores required to support mm -hmm. your installation. Now, how does Oracle price you know, it's database licenses, it's by core. Mm -hmm. So, if you can reduce your number of cores, you can reduce the amount you're paying Oracle in terms of database licenses, and of course that'll ripple through maintenance. Now, why is that important? It's important because when you talk to customers, many customers, 50% of their TCO, not their CapEx, but their TCO is Oracle license and maintenance. And so, if you can use Flash, maybe spend a little bit more on your storage infrastructure, optimize and balance out that infrastructure, reduce your cores, you're going to have a direct 
positive impact on your license and maintenance fees. Have you seen that? I absolutely have. In fact, it's something that is absolutely both implied and can be inferred, if not explicitly stated in your first work, mm -hmm. way before really the incredible adoption of Flash right now. So that was very uh, tremendous foresight on, on your part. But also, I mean, I'm seeing this uh, as not just an initial interest point of customers, but one in which they're just clamoring for more information about. So the very paradigm of virtualization is to make your infrastructure more effective. But when the infrastructure itself becomes more effective at the same time, everybody wins. Yeah, and by the way, that's not exclusive to, to Oracle uh, mm -hmm. database mm -hmm. environments. It's true for SQL Server, DB2, et cetera. So. All right, Don, listen, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's a Absolutely, pleasure having you. Great. Absolutely, thank you. All right, thanks, keep it right there, everybody. Thanks. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, and we're live from VM, uh, VM World. <laughs> EMC World <laughs> That's next, a couple 2014. Months yeah, yeah VM, <laughs> VM World's in a few months. All right, keep it right there, we'll be right back. <laughs> okay.